In this tutorial, it's going to be the second version of learning how to fill in designs to engrave on metal using the Comus Creations engraving tip for Silhouette. This tutorial is specifically for those of you that have the Silhouette Studio edition that came with your machine. Because if you do not have designer edition or an upgraded version that has the sketch option, you will not be able to fill in your designs with my previous tutorial. So the first thing that you need to do is go to defont.com. You will download the Peony Patterns font. It's a free font. The lowercase letters A through Z, each one has a pattern to it. Not all of these patterns work to fill in, but it's pretty much trial and error. Find what pattern you like or patterns and make a note of what letters correspond with that pattern and you will have it. What I did was I printed off this exact page and put it in my notebook that I have that I write down my favorite settings for different material types or tips and tricks that I've learned that I don't want to forget so that I can go back and look. I printed it out, put it in the notebook so whenever I want to use this option to fill in, I can pull out the notebook paper and look and see what pattern that I want to fill in with. Instead of trying to fumble through and type in all the little letters to find out what pattern goes with what letter. So anyhow, the top image is the Amy Comus or Comus Creations engraving tip or silhouette. This is the original one. It is a pointed tip engraving tool. They also now have a blunted end engraving tool. I do have both. I personally like the pointed tip. Uh, in my opinion, I think it engraves better. It gives more detail, especially when you're filling in, and that is just my preference. The bottom left image is of the Blank Slate by Traditions packaging stamping blanks. I use stamping blanks because the metal is firm. However, it is still soft enough to give a nice engrave, and it works wonderfully with the Silhouette Cameo and the Compass Creations engraving tip. About every other week, Hobby Lobby has a 50% off sale on Blank Slate, so you can get a package depending on what size you choose for as little as 75 cents. That's usually when I go clear their shelves and uh, keep inventory because I engrave quite a bit. And with Christmas coming up, a lot of people are getting personalized jewelry this year from us. Um, they do offer different sizes and shapes. I choose the ones that ha already have the hole drilled in them to add the split ring or the jump ring in it. And your measurements on your packages, um, some come in inches and the millimeters. Like this bottom right image is of the one inch circles. Well, it shows you 25 millimeters, which equals to one inch. They have the 20 millimeter circles, which I use for earrings to pair with this one inch circle. The 20 millimeter does not have the conversion for inches, but you can easily go online and look up a conversion chart for millimeters to inches type in your millimeters and it will give you the exact inches so that you can put it in your silhouette studio to make a template for that size that you're cutting out. Now Blank Slate does have a variety pack that comes with different circles, squares, rectangles, um, regular price is like $1.99. I do not recommend engraving or getting those to engrave on. No matter how many times I have sent them through any of the pieces that are in the package, any, no matter how many times I've sent them through the machine to engrave, it never engraves deep enough that I find a great quality that I would even gift to someone. Um, why it's a lot thinner than if you were to buy a package with just one shape in it, I'm not sure. It does not state on the packaging that they are thinner than, say, the one-inch circles. I just recommend if you are going to engrave and you're going to sell them or even give them as gifts, give your people quality and just buy the ones with the packages with one shape in them. You'll, you'll be very, very pleased in the end. So today we're going to be doing this design on a one inch circle, blessed mama with an arrow in the middle and a heart in the middle of the arrow. This tutorial, as I said before, is about filling in your designs. Instead of just getting an outline, you're going to learn to fill them in. 
to give you a full engraved look. Okay. If you have Silhouette Studio open and you've already downloaded the Peony Patterns font, you need to make sure that you close out your Silhouette Studio, let your font install into your studio, then reopen Studio. So that way, whenever you go to your text tool, you can find your Peony Patterns in there. If your Silhouette Studio is open and you've just downloaded it, you go to find it, it's not going to be there because it hasn't been installed into your software yet. Just a tip for you. Now I am at my engraving template because I engrave a lot. I made a template of all the sizes that I use most often so that I can save it in my library and on my hard drive. So when I have an order or I have a quick gift that I need to get somebody and I'm going to do a personalized monogram or something on a necklace, I can pull up this template and figure out which size that I'm going to do, pull it off, put it on here, put my design and be done with it. Just a little tip for you if you're going to be doing this on a regular basis. Today we're going to use the one inch circle. I'm going to place it on column five, row three. Now you will pull in your design. If you need to trace it, this is where you will go ahead and trace it. Do not fill it with color. My design is filled with color just because that's how it's stored in my library. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fill color and I'm going to click transparent. So now all you see is the outline. Now, if I were to send this design straight through silhouette, exactly like it is, to engrave on my stamping blank, this is what you're going to get. You're only going to get the outline. You're not going to get a filled in look. You're not going to have anything but the outline, literally. If you like that look, I have no, no problem with it. I'm just here to teach you how to fill it in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to size my design just a little smaller and move it up. Now what I want to do is select my design, right click and choose duplicate and set the second design just a little good piece over from my first design. Okay, so now I'm going to choose the text tool. I'm going to go, because I've already been working with it, Peony Patterns is already up. The default, I believe, is Arial. You'll just need to highlight it, type in Peony, and it'll come up, make sure you select it. So we already know that we're going to use the lowercase h, which is a wood grain. Okay, so this small square is not going to cover it. So we're going to type in a few, hit enter, type in a few more. What we can do is we can go up here and see that we need to do. It just depends on how big your design is to how many rows that you need. So you can just keep going through and check it. I wouldn't suggest stretching it out because you can do that. And you'll see because this is considered the lowercase h all the way across there are blue squiggly lines showing that it's not really a word just right click go up to where it says add to dictionary and those will go away okay so now i'm going to cover my original design with the patterns that i've made now you want to select both the design and the peony patterns we're going to go to modify window and we're going to click crop. You want to give it just a minute because it's got to work all of its kinks out. And it takes a minute depending on how big your design is. That's the reason why we made it a little bit smaller. So hopefully it doesn't take two hours to do. Okay. So now our design is still, still selected, excuse me. And you can see all these little bitty black marks. That's part of the design. Now let's unselect it. Now do you see how the design is sort of filled in? Okay, so now what we're going to do, we want to give it, we don't want to leave it like this. So we want to make sure that it does have an outline to hold the body of the inside of the words and the shapes. So we're going to take, let's right click and move this up, bring it to the front. 
let's take our duplicated design and we might want to zoom in just a little bit so that you can be sure that you're getting it exactly lined up and you can use your arrow tool as well to move it up and down all right now let's get it placed exactly where it would be okay now let's zoom out and look at it now you see you have your outline and you have your fill so let's select both and just make sure you have every single black spot highlighted we'll right click and we will click group and now it's all together now Let's click on our design and right click choose copy we're going to go back to our engraving template right click paste in front we're working with a one inch circle so what we're going to do we're going to have to resize this down to be able to fit into our circle and of course it's still too big but what we're going to do so we'll zoom in so that we can see better. Grab a corner node and make sure you use the corner nodes to resize, to pull down. That way everything stays proportionate and it doesn't get distorted. Center it. And remember that if you're using the blank slate stamping blanks, the holes are already in the top of them, so make sure you adjust your design accordingly. So right where my design is right now, let's say the hole is right here, we are good to go. Okay, once you get it centered to where you want it, that's where you will go to your cut settings. And you see that my circle template is not bright red. That's because if I click on it, it's on no cut because we're not cutting that. We're only wanting to cut the design. Okay, so we have cut, selected. In material type, choose cover stock. Go to your blade setting and make sure you're on sketch pen, speed nine, thickness 33 and choose double cut. Now what is different from one of the other things that is different from this tutorial than the previous tutorial is we're not going to duplicate the design, align it on top of one another because what we're going to do is we're going to send it through silhouette. It's going to engrave twice because of the double cut. Once it is done, do not take it out of your machine. Do not unload it. Do not pull your piece off of the mat. What you're going to do is you'll come back to your software with your mat still in place, not unloaded. You're going to click start again and you're going to let it go back through and you're going to get another design, the, you know, the same design engraved again. So that's going to give you four engravings with this filled in pattern on your blank piece. Once you are done sending it through, which you can send it through as many times as you want to. Don't send it through too many times because at some point you will start chipping away and your metal will start changing colors. So only do it a couple of times with double cut and just keep going and looking at it. Don't unload it. Just look at it. And you may see some dust on your design, which is normal from the engraving. And just take your finger or a damp paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. I wouldn't wipe it off until after you're completely done engraving and sending it through as many times as you want to. So when you're ready, be sure to click send a silhouette. When you are finished, you will have a design that looks similar to this. I hope this tutorial helped you. I hope to see many of you 
making beautiful engraved pieces. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to comment below. I will try my best to answer any questions that I can or if there's any tutorials that you would like to see. I'll be more than more than happy to take a look and uh, see what we can do. I have more tutorials coming up um, including placement on your mat, um, how to keep your blanks from moving around and just some other fun things uh, that you can do with your engraving. In the description box below, I will leave a link to where you can purchase the Comus Creations engraving tip. You will also find the link to download the Peony Patterns font as well. I hope you all have a nice day, and I hope to see many of you engraving and making beautiful pieces.